Hey everyone, welcome to the Amy Howard Kitchen Summit. I'm here today to talk to you about glazing cabinets. And ironically, I am actually redoing my whole kitchen in this house that we've moved into and glazing my cabinets in there as well. So it was good timing. These are actually, these cabinets are actually for our new shop. And so I thought that what a great opportunity to be able to share with you the glazing process with uh, something that will be sitting in my shop going forward. So before we get started, I just want to talk to you about a couple of different things. Um, one is paint in particular. So with regard to paint, this, this color is called uh, Tick Tock. It's a beautiful light uh, kind of vintage blue. I love this color a lot, but a lot of people want it toned down. So one of the great ways to do that, of course, is with glazing. And so that's what we're going to do here today. But there are several different ways that you can do that. And uh, two in particular that work well for me is if you want a lighter glaze result, then you would want to add matte sealer to the painted piece before you actually glaze it. And if you want a little bit darker, kind of a rougher look, messier look, for lack of a better word, on your glaze result, then you would not want to put any matte sealer on top of it before you actually apply the glaze. So I have a sample here that I wanted to show you of different glaze results depending on uh, matte sealer and no matte sealer. So if you can see right in here, this is with matte sealer applied and then the glaze. And this is with no matte sealer applied and then the glaze. Some people like this uh, messy look and some people want it a little bit lighter. You can also uh, dilute it with water as well, your glaze mix, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. But just specifically, if you want an overall lighter look and, it, and to run the glaze on it with a little bit smoother process, you can put matte sealer on first. This, of course, right here, this white stripe right here across the horizontal section is the actual paint with nothing on it besides matte sealer. And so this color is called Dearborn. It's a beautiful white, very um, neutral white. I use it quite a bit. This other side here is TikTok right above our head. And uh, this one over here is the one that has no matte sealer on it before glazing. This is with matte sealer, then glazing. This is nothing but matte sealer, no glaze at all. So there's quite a bit of difference between the, the color variations depending on the sealer use. So just so you know that you have these options available. Also want to show you a little bit of an example. This is a test cabinet that I did for my kitchen. And this one, if you can see, there's just a little bit of a kind of a striation on here from the sealer. I, uh, and then adding the, mat, the glaze on top of it after the sealer. So I did make these a little bit lighter. This color is called Lux Gray. And it's also very neutral, a little bit warm side, and it's just beautiful as well. I love all the Amy Howard paint colors. Okay, so to get started, I want to talk to you about mixing the glaze and the paint first. So with the paint, back to the color was the first thing that we talked about. The second thing I want to tell you is um, how to, when you're painting, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of videos today on how to paint your piece. The one thing I want to share with you that I had learned along the way that's super important is when you have a piece where you have a stripes of wood or sections of wood that go vertical and horizontal, you want to paint accordingly. So down here at the bottom, there's this little section in here that is actually horizontal wood grain. And then these two sides go up and down and they're the vertical wood grain. So when you go to paint, I personally what I do is I paint my horizontals in first and then I run uh, the vertical up the sides and then to meet here at these corners so that you don't get the layover. I think it helps a lot because as we all know, the Amy Howard paint does have a thickness to it and it will show a little bit of a texture. It does self-level, but your brush marks are super important that you want to go along the way that you, a path that you want to see it look when you're finished. So just keep that in mind as you're painting. Check your drips, especially if you have insets like this. After you've painted, step back. Take a look at it, give it a couple minutes. If you see anything rolling down, just run your brush in here so that you don't have drips in these little crevices along the way. Because that will uh, distract from your glazing process, which ends up being so pretty in the end if these are clean and well painted. Now for this particular cabinet, because it's going into my shop, I did not paint the inside of the cabinet or the inside of the doors. In my kitchen, all of the doors will be painted on the inside, but for this one in particular, this is just a straight up solid oak cabinet. It's about seven feet tall. I have two of these to do for the shop, but this one in particular, because it is for the shop, I did not paint the inside of the cabinet doors. So I just want you guys to know that when you do it in a home, you know, it really is best or in any kind of a, a piece, a show piece or something that you're going to sell, like a standalone accent piece, 
you would want to paint the inside of the door so that you don't have the edge here. Just for the shop, it's not, this is where I'm going to store paint and other supplies so it isn't necessary to have the inside of this painted. Two coats of paint is what you need here. The great thing about glazing is that it's very forgiving. So when you, when you go to paint a piece, and especially if you're not going to do anything besides seal it, you know, there's times you may need to do uh, two, three, even more if it has a, a really light base to it or if it's a really light color in general before you get a solid 100% coverage. Now, one step paint does not mean one coat, but it does really cover well. And I know that most of the colors that I have used have only taken two. And there are a couple of super light ones that may need more than two, depending on what the pieces that you're actually painting. But this in particular was just a two coat process for me because I'm going through glazing. If I was going to just um, put matte sealer on this in general, I would probably have added just one more coat. So I call this about an 80 to 90% coverage. Um, in, in general, I like to see that before I start a glazing process, but it does not have to be 100%. So just keep that in mind. It takes a little bit of pressure off you when you're going through this process. So the next thing I want to share with you is about mixing glazing. Um, I have mine already pre-mixed, but I want to talk to you about the supplies, which is super important, uh, that you need to have to get started. And part of today is about um, looking at different bundle options that you can have if you want to glaze your cabinets, if you want to wax your cabinets, whatever the process is that you're going to be doing, there'll be uh, bundles available, I believe, for you to be able to, to choose from and work with. And so uh, this one in particular, the first thing, most important thing, is the prep work. Prep work is not my favorite, but it's super important to do. So this right here, y'all can see this, clean slate. I tell you, this stuff is magic, works great. Takes off wax, takes off oil, takes off dirt. Fantastic. A little bit goes a long way and you don't have to wipe it off afterwards. You just use it with a rough cloth, clean everything up, let it dry five minutes and you're ready to go. So just keep this in mind. It, also in any kind of cabinet, if you have loose particles, things like that, you would want to lightly sand those specific, spot, specific spots, but you don't need to sand your entire piece. So the glazing mix that I have today, I've put into a little container like this. I've already mixed it together, but I want to tell you what's inside of it. The first thing that I added to it, of course, is going to be this, and it is glazed over. Glazed over is a wonderful product. It's very versatile. It actually has um, a sealer in it, so you don't need to seal after you put this on. I just happen to like to do that, especially on cabinets, because I think that it adds extra protection. So just know that you don't have to seal afterwards, but I, I do recommend it for a, a cabinet that's going to be used quite a bit. So glazed over, and this is, is going to go in one part. So one part glazed over, and then one part water, one part glazed over, one part water, and then your color. So for me today, I'm using two different um, gel stains as my color mix. And those two gel stains are Hazel Mahogany, messy little can here, and then my Kensington Black. I just broke this one open so it's not quite as crazy looking. But these two mixed together, and I usually do about a 70% black to a 30% Hazel Mahogany as a one. So one to one to one water. And all of those mixed together brings up your glaze. Now. I'm going to tell you something super, super important as well. Please, please do yourself a favor and do a test board. Get a big board, paint it the color that you want for your cabinets, and then mix your glaze and do a section of a test board. If you don't like it, if you want it to be a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter than what you have already, or if it's drying too fast for you to work with, then you will want to go in and add water to keep it from drying quite so fast, just a little bit at a time or if you want it a little bit lighter in um, color, then you would actually want to add a little more glaze and a little more water at the same time until you get what you like. So take the time to do a test board and help yourself out. It'll save you so much in the long run. Otherwise, you'll end up repainting something that you don't like, and that's just extra effort, and nobody not, likes to go you know, three steps back and one forward. So keep that in mind. So I have mixed out my glaze, and I just also wanted to show you this little can of TikTok here. This is the smaller one. Uh, this particular little can, this 16 ounce can, uh, half of it, it only took half of this can to paint this entire cabinet. Seven foot tall and about two feet wide. This paint goes a long way. So I'll be able to use this for my other cabinet as well that's exactly the same size. And this is enough for both of those huge cabinets. 
So I, whenever you mix up a glaze, you can keep. It does have a great shelf life. I just recommend that you really shake it up or stir it up really well before you use it. And even sometimes during the process, if you have a little plastic spoon just to kind of run through it, keep those colors mixed with the glaze so that you get an even, uh, an even result as long, along the way as you are glazing your piece. Now everyone, uh, everyone does glazing a little bit differently, and I, in particular, am a um, brush and sponge person. I do know that there are people that use cheesecloth, they you know, can stipple it. Uh, there are folks that just use a brush and they don't wipe it off. I like to use a, a lint-free towel to wipe it off afterwards. Depends on the piece, but most, about 95% of the time, that's what I would do. Just really... Uh, to me, it gives a cleaner look. I, I like the end result, and again, practicing on a board helps with that. So, to paint this particular piece, I use the two and a half inch uh, brush here. This brush is amazing. It covers very well. It, the paint goes on extremely easily with this brush, and it's just a chip brush. It's Amy's chip brush, and if you don't have one, I recommend you get it. In fact, get a couple of them. They, uh, they last a long time, but this thing, it, the coverage is just amazing with this brush. I don't know what it is about it, but I have found this to be my favorite tool when it comes to just doing a cabinet base or any kind of a large area. These things are wonderful. And then also the nylon brush. This is really good for a little bit more intricate detail and also generally for just large pieces too as well. If you prefer the nylon feel, you can use this as well. And again, the paint's self-leveling, but this brush is just as fantastic as the other one. I also like to keep the artist brush around. This is another Amy Howard brush uh, for small spaces, for anywhere that I want to touch up and I don't want to get the big brush out. I didn't need to use it on this cabinet. Yeah, not yet, but uh, it is available uh, at Amy Howard home and I would recommend getting one of those too. So to get started I'm going to show you uh, how to do the glazing process and you got to work it. Remember you do your test board. This is what we're going to do. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glaze to my sponge and then I'm going to start right here. on this cabinet door. It's super easy. I'm gonna run it on like this. And you're probably thinking, wow, that looks like a mess. But it comes off, or it wipes off super clean, so not difficult at all. Some people, again, like I say, like to use a brush. I prefer using a sponge because it goes on faster. I can work with it a little bit better. And then I take a lint-free rag and just start wiping it off. And when I wipe it off, I wipe it off with the grain as well because you're gonna see those movements along the boards and I don't want to go against the res you know resist against the grain itself because it will look a little bit um, unfinished, almost maybe unprofessional. I guess is a, a word I wouldn't mind using here, but you want it to look like a clean job that was well thought out. So this is an opportunity to just to get a little bit out of the corners. And run your glaze through. I love this. It's a beautiful color. And then when you're finished, and it's dry. It should be dry. I like to give glaze about an hour at least, unless it's a super humid location, then maybe a couple, two, three, four hours. But then when you're finished with it, um, if you don't like the lightness of it, so say it's just a little bit too light for what you want, then you would want to go a little bit darker. You can do another coat. And this might uh, not come out too clear here. I'm just going to try to bend this down a little bit. But do you see the difference between the two now? This one has really toned down uh, the way that this looks, and there's a little bit in the crevices, whereas this side over here that just has the paint on it is more uh, one-dimensional. 
So this process is just amazing. And look how long it took me, just a couple of minutes to actually put this on and wipe it off. And I work in small sections, so I'm going to go down and do the bottom half of this cabinet next. Then I'll do the rest of the doors and the base as well. And uh, when it's all finished, I will add a coat of matte sealer to it and some really cool funky knobs that will uh, really make it stand out. And I'm super excited to see how it's going to end. But uh, I think this is a great color and I can't wait to see it finished and I can't wait to share it with you as well. So if you have any questions, you know, you can reach out to Amy Howard at home and you can reach out to the before and after group on Facebook and we're all there to help you along the way. And if there's anything that we can do to uh, make it a little bit easier for you, if you need your steps walked through with you one by one, there's a lot of great folks out there that can do that. And there's some beautiful work before and after to, that you can see people have shared so much out there. I just am mesmerized by all the talent. So thanks a lot for watching. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Don't forget to go get your bundles. And if you have any questions, like I said, let us know. Take care. Have a great day.